Hello everyone and welcome once again to my Revelation Hub. If you are just joining us, you are blessed, you are highly favored, you are the head and not the tail, above and, ne and never below. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. The same yesterday, today and forever. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Before we dive into our exhortation today, let us acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this opportunity you have given me to minister to myself and to your people. May I decrease so you increase. Take the stage in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen. Our exhortation today is going to be on how to attract and keep destiny help us our proof text is from second king chapter 4 verse 8 to 37 now it is very long but i will summarize and this is about elisha and the shunammite woman and we in this uh, uh story uh know that elisha is a man of god and he used to walk through they used to go through a certain street and this Shunammite woman noticed that he's a holy man and will call him and give him food, insist that he eats at her house. And she was wealthy, she was married and she had affluence, influence in her community amongst her people. So as time went on now, she tell, told her husband that this is a holy man. Let us build him a room in the upper and at, at, the, at the ceiling so that whenever he comes he can stay there and pray now that they did and then when Elisha came to visit he tried to bless her like let me say say she'll be rich and the woman said I'm already blessed I already have affluence then Gehazi came towards Elisha and said look this woman doesn't have a child and Elisha turned and told her this time next year you're going to be pregnant so just as a prophecy that Elisha gave she got pregnant she gave birth to a boy and it happened that the boy died now when elisha was told he came to her house and rose and, and raised up the child from the death hallelujah that's just a summary of it but i suggest you read it in your private time so you could actually get the revelation behind it now we know that god is omniscience omniscience he can do all things with man is impossible but with god is all things are possible now God can do everything by himself but God actually has acknowledged the importance of man blessing man but he said in his word the less I shall be blessed by the greater he also said in his word he sought for a man to pray to stand in the gap for the people but he did not find so God actually recognizes that man has a role to play in the blessing of another man in standing in the gap for another man now we have heard in our communities or in our societies or around the world where people will say i have no one to bless me no one helps me no one gives me this no one gives me that no one gives me this and nobody has actually had someone who has actually bought them a gift i've met a couple of people who have actually said no one has ever given them a gift and i'm like really they said yes but it's a bad sign that no matter how rich you are even the rich have destiny helpers. Destiny helpers and divine helpers are not for the poor. They are destiny helpers that give you platforms that will connect you to the right people. You know, destiny helpers come in different shapes and sizes. Some of them are unbelievers. And that same word of God says the wealth of the Gentile belongs to the believers. We have many Christians today who will not accept gifts, whether male or female, from an unbeliever because they think it is this, that, or that. It is whatever, whatever is not holy or whatever. I don't know why they think that, but the scripture says that. The wealth of the Gentiles, the unbelievers, are, are supposed to be, will be given unto us. So you should not refuse a gift or an offer or a platform uh, 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 given to you by an unbeliever that is profitable to, that is in alliance with God's word. Uh, so you should never refuse a gift or platform, an open door, a connection from an unbeliever because you think that uh, you're supposed to, your divine, your destiny helpers are only supposed to be believers. That is so wrong. And that mentality has made a lot of believers, disciples of Christ, to be caged because of that thinking. The Shunammite woman was not a born again Christian. She was just a, Christ, a woman who acknowledged God, who, who could see God in a man and in, in in elisha but she was she 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 the bible didn't record her as a born again a believer a christian but she actually acknowledged him as 
Elisha as a prophet. Now, I like to say this. You can have a, a friend, a wife, a husband, a colleague, a pastor. If you do not recognize the grace that could be upon their head, the grace cannot work for you. Everybody you meet has a grace to carry that could benefit you. I'll take for example, there are people who have powerful le leadership skills, inborn, that is a grace. There are people who are natural uh, public speakers, that is a grace. There are people who when they enter a room, they know how to connect. They have natural affluence and influence, that is a grace. Some others need to struggle or work hard to get there, but to some people, it's natural born. You would say that it's somehow inbuilt in their DNA, but that is how God made it. So you have to recognize everyone and appreciate everyone. That is why it's dangerous to look down on people. That is why it's dangerous or it's not good to minimize people, to treat people wrongly, because you do not know what that person carries. Now, I'm going to go further now to talk about uh, how to attract and keep your destiny helpers. Every individual, every business, every ministry needs destiny helpers to take you to your next level. And they come in different shapes and sizes. And if you do not treat your destiny helper well, if you're arrogant, if you're proud, if you have got a bad character, they're going to leave you. No matter how anointed you are, no matter the influence, no matter the affluence you have, no matter what it is. Now, from the way God does things, when he connects you with somebody, is that the person should learn from you or you should learn from the person. The person should benefit from you or you should benefit from the person. And as what God taught me in my secret place, he taught me that every relationship is beneficial. Every relationship. Is profitable a healthy relationship should be profitable now if a relationship is one-sided it cannot stand so if you treat your divine helper wrongly or badly and the divine helper draws back or destiny helper draws back and you keep coming they will just keep going and remember you cannot treat people like garbage and have God answer your prayers and have God send you another destiny helper because it's a destiny helper for every season and there are some people that by grace, that whoever they meet, it, they automatically become their destiny helpers. The first thing, the first thing, number one, is your character. The Shunammite woman had character. She was a good woman. She knew how to talk to Elisha. Because of her wealth, her affluence, her influence in her community, she could look down on Elisha and talk to him anyhow and treat him anyhow. She had character. There are many people who are looking for things in life, who want a breakthrough, but their character has stopped them. I keep on telling people, stop using prayer when character and common sense are supposed to be used. Don't use prayer when common sense and character are supposed to be used. It is all wrong. When you have the right character, when you're able to say, sorry, please, thank you. When you're, when you're grateful for the little thing that the destiny helper has done, when you're able to appreciate, when you're able to be polite, because those are the little things that are in the character. Be polite to people. Talk politely to people, even when you are upset, even when you are angry. You don't use the, the, the derogatory words on people. You don't insult people. There are many people who have insultive language. And even if you are not using the insultive language directly to your destiny helper, or you are using it to somebody, let me say you are you're, 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 you're talking about something, or you are talking on the phone, and you use insultive language to somebody, rude, or you are not polite to somebody on the phone in front of your destiny helper, it's a turn off. Even if the destiny helper had something to gain from you. Look, there are people when you, God sends you somebody, whether it's in ministry, your business, in your person things, personal things in your life, to take you to the next level. Do not take that person for granted. Do everything, even if you have to beg, to keep that person. 
Do whatever it takes. The second thing, be kind. The Shunammite woman was kind. She was kind to Elisha. She was kind to Gehazi. She was polite or to him. You know, you know what it means for you to open up your home to a total stranger? That is something that you should you should really have a good heart for compassion. She was a generous woman. Compassionate. Now, the way she had treated Elijah, uh, Elisha, even when the son died, Elisha felt compelled to come back to restore joy in that woman's heart because that woman was a his destiny helper. Every relationship, as God was teaching me in my secret place, is two sides. For a relationship to be profitable, to go a long way, it needs to be profitable both ways. You gain from the person, the other person gains from you. You learn from the other person, the other person learns from you. Any one-sided relationship cannot last, cannot stand the test of time. I'm not talking about exploitative relationship. That means even if you have a friend that is beneficial to you, can make you be a better person. That is what I'm talking about. The third thing is prayer. If you want to attract and keep destiny helpers, Pray for people. Be an intercessor. I have people in my life that I pray for. I've met once or twice, three times. But the way they have blessed me, I keep praying for them. Even when their season of help may have gone by, I still keep praying for them. I pray for their businesses, their family, the salvation of their soul, especially the salvation of their soul. If you want Jesus to keep sending you destiny helpers, pray for the salvation of the soul of the people for their deliverance for their healing pray for the salvation of their soul every moment you have you get a chance try to win them to christ i'm telling you god will send you people god will send you pillars in your ministry in your business god will send you people who will who will take you into a, a dimension in your destiny hallelujah god will send you people that would transform you, will take you into your next level, breakthroughs, miracles, testimonies. Hallelujah. So these are the points, the tips I'm giving you, and I've used them, and it works. It works. I told you earlier on in my previous videos that I was teaching you, prayer cannot open all doors. Prayer cannot open all doors. Don't use prayer when character and common sense are needed. Your destiny helper is your propeller. Your father is your destiny helper. Your mother is your destiny helper. Your children are your destiny helpers. Whoever you meet in life are your destiny helpers. Don't take them for granted. Don't minimize them. And for parents, your children are your destiny helper. And it's even more blessing when you meet a servant of God. They are your destiny helpers. Remember, in Amos 3, uh, 3 7 says, God not, does nothing until he reveals it to his servants. So whatever it is, whatever blessing or grace you want to connect to, locate a servant of God. Locate someone who carries the grace you need. And connect to them. Hallelujah.